In this episode of the FXDM educational series, we're going to be taking a look at the stochastics oscillator. Now, stochastics was created by George Lane, and stochastics means that we're looking at a data set that we can analyze statistically, but that we can't make really firm conclusions about where it's going to be in the future, which sounds a lot like price data in the forex. Now, the stochastics oscillator essentially analyzes the relationship between uh, closed prices over a look-back period, closed prices, and that look-back period, the default is about 14 periods, so that's usually what you're looking at. So closed prices, and that is then subtracted from the lowest low over that look-back period, which is then divided by the highest high price over that same look-back period minus the lowest low over that period. Now, essentially what's going on here is that we're looking to see how close the close price is over time, how closely is it trending towards the highest high or the lowest low on average. Because obviously if the close price is getting closer and closer to the high price over time, well then that's telling us something about bullish momentum. And the same thing would be true, but in reverse, if the close price was getting closer and closer to the low price on average over that period, then that would tell us something about bearish momentum to the downside. Now the result from the stochastics calculation is then subsequently multiplied by 100 and every day we can graph it. And I've drawn a little graph here of what the stochastics oscillator looks like. Now it has two components. The first of these, which I've shown as a green line here, is called percent %k. Now in this case, percent %k is actually what's going on from the calculation itself. And then percent %d, which is the red line here, that's a three period, or the default anyway, is a three period average of percent %k. So they'll crisscross each other a little bit because percent %d will lag percent %k because it's an average. Now the oscillator is range bound, which means that it cannot go beyond 100 and it can't go below zero. Now further, investors will also apply an overbought and oversold territory here on the oscillator, and that's not uncommon with different oscillators. The, it, it will very rarely equal 100, and it will very rarely, if almost never, e actually equal zero, but it'll get really close. And what we look at it as, if it gets within about 20%, of either of these extreme ranges. So here that would be about 80%, and down here that would be 20%, then we would say that that's a fairly extreme reading. In fact, below 20% is considered oversold, and above 80% is overbought. Now, the stochastics oscillator at the beginning of a trend, it can be pretty volatile. So for example, oversold and overbought readings at the beginning of a trend are probably not very helpful. Instead, what we're looking for is we're looking for a time when the stochastics oscillator is in one of these extreme ranges. So for example, here, where it's, it's oversold, but when that were to occur in a bullish primary trend. So here's an example. Let's say, for instance, I've drawn some bars here. Let's say that the price had been in a long-term trend for quite a while and then starts to pull back in this little rounded pattern here. And of course, the stochastics oscillator is going to follow it. It gets into oversold territory, and then percent %k crosses above percent %d, which a lot of investors will use that as a trigger, telling them that A, we've got bullish momentum is beginning to build, and B, it's a warning that the stochastic oscillator is going to come up out of oversold territory. So some investors will use the cross as a trigger, some will use that actual exit from oversold territory as a trigger, as a bullish trigger in a circumstance like this, that bears have been overextended, they've oversold the market temporarily, and that this bullish trend is going to reassert itself to the upside. Now, of course, the opposite would also be true with a bearish trend where the stochastics oscillator indicates that bulls have become overextended temporarily and that that bearish trend is going to reassert itself. In fact, let's look at two examples on a couple of charts of oversold or overbought readings that investor would want to pay attention to. So as you can see here on the dollar yen, we had a bullish trend and then a cross into oversold territory during that bullish trend. Once percent %k crossed above percent %d and the stochastics began to come up out of that oversold territory, investors would have looked at that as a triggering event for bullish trades to be opened or added to. Now here's a bearish example, also on the dollar to the yen. In this case, the prevailing trend was negative, but briefly the price did start to rally. That overbought reading is telling us that the bulls are probably overextended, at least temporarily, and that the 
prevailing bearish trend is going to reassert itself or likely will reassert itself where shorts have an opportunity to the downside. A great way to think about the stochastics oscillator is that it's a momentum indicator. It tells us whether bulls are reasserting themselves in a bullish trend or bears are reasserting themselves in a bearish trend so that investors can make sure that they're trading with the trend at the right time.